On a Thursday where Ricardo Chambers is rocking to Hannah Montana and Miley Cyrus. We have so much to celebrate. We're starting by talking about cricket. Opener Brandon King slammed an unbeaten 82 to lead the West Indies to a 10-wicket victory over England in their second T20 international. Played at the National Cricket Stadium in Grenada earlier today. King was supported by skipper Ravman Powell who contributed 50 from 28 balls as the West Indies compiled 176 for 7 from their 20 overs. The English threatened to overhaul the Windies total with Sam Curran leading the charge with 50 from 32 deliveries. Curran was supported by opener Phil Salt 25 and Will Jax 24. Alzari Joseph was the most successful Windies bowler, returning figures of 3 for 39. Meanwhile, there was a wicket apiece for Jason Holder and left-arm spinner Gudekesh Moji. So team, a lot to celebrate, a lot to be happy about. Ricardo, you were walking to lunch with the app on your phone looking at the match, you know? That's to tell you how intriguing it was. You, your lunch had to take a back seat for the match or the match had to come with you to lunch and we know Ricardo does not play with his belly so wow what a win we win <laughs> well, well Mariah you, you said so much just now but let me just deal with the part having to do with the West Indies and another excellent performance from the Caribbean side really impressed with what they have delivered in the last two matches and today again another complete performance with the bat yes they were in trouble at 48 for four at one stage but that's the depth i was talking about and this is a large part of why lance and mariah i feel that we have a potential world cup winning batting lineup because there yeah. is so much depth there and they bat as far as i'm concerned all the way down to number 11. the 80 run partnership between brandon king and the captain rovman powell was quite important Powell getting a half century, King getting 82, Andre Russell with a couple of sixes at the back end as well, sending the West Indies over 170. And then in the field, they were good again. Yes. Shimron Hetmeyer, he isn't scoring a lot of runs at the moment, but he's been brilliant um, catching. And just the way the entire team came together and good Akesh Moti brought into the team today to replace um, Ramaria Shepherd. Shepard. One from for nine from his four overs, stifling the England batsmen um, within the first uh, ten overs, and that made a massive difference to the outcome of this game. So again, another really good all-round performance. And Brandon King said it at the end of the match in in the post-game interview when he said, "Today it was me because I was the one who got a start, and it was important for me to push on." But on another day. It will be another player, yes. and that's why Lance and Mariah, I am personally so excited about this T20 setup. Yeah, I think it feels really good, and that statement, Ricardo, seals it all because we are getting to the point, and match after match, we are becoming confident that any player, any Windies batter, can step up at a particular point and get the job done for the team. And I think that's very important because for quite some time, we would say once particular players were dismissed, the match was over. I feel a bit confident. I feel a bit reassured now that although we lose, let's just say, top four, we still have a chance to walk away with a match. Yeah, well, to accentuate the point that you've both made, um, I think most people watching this show know that Nicholas Puran and Shimron Hetmar are among my favorite batsmen in, in world cricket, not just West Indies cricket. I like these players a lot. And they haven't done anything in the series yet. Yeah. And the West Indies batting is performing. Yes. So it speaks to the fact that there are different batting strengths in, in, in the lineup. So, um, you know... If, if, if some of the key players fail, there are others that can step in. I want to make the point as well that in both games that we've seen so far, there were key moments in the games that could decide it. Because in both matches, England were in positions 
that they could win, win the games. And we hear people talk in international sport about getting the key moments right. And that is what the West Indies have been able to do so far in this series, getting the key moments right. Because I know when England reflect on these two lost matches, they're going to tell themselves that they, they were in a position to get victories. And I say that to emphasize the fact that this series is not over. The West Indies are leading 2-0, but it's a five-match series. And uh, based on what we have seen in the series so far, even though the West Indies have won, um, we know they have a record of inconsistency. So I'm not writing off England at all. What I want to point out, though, is that the West Indies have gotten these key moments right. And uh, in critical moments in the match where it's in a balance and England are in strong positions, the West Indies have on both occasions so far, taken away the advantage from England and, and won the match. So, I, or the match is. So, I, I like that about the performances so far, and I just wanted to see them continue. Yeah, and you made that point, Lance. So, at 4 for 54 today, for yeah. example, that yes. was a key moment. Yes. Um, when the West Indies had lost four wickets that's for right. about 8 to 12 that's runs. Right. Yes. And you needed to consolidate, and that's what you got from Rovman Powell, the captain, and... Brandon King. King going on to make 82. Another key moment in today's game was the penultimate over bowled by Jason, Jason Holder, Holder. Yes. when England needed 31, I think it was, and he conceded just three runs Amazing and got stuff. a wicket. Had that gone the other way yeah. with a struggling Andre Russell to bowl the final over, yes. then a 10-run victory for the West Indies could easily yes. have been a defeat and you're looking at 1-1. One, one. So you are right. Those moments are so key in all of cricket, but yes. especially in T20 cricket when you don't have a lot of time to rebound from big mistakes. Yes. Um, yes. And we saw that today, and you're right, we saw that in the first T20 as well. Yeah, yeah. and I want to make the point as well that Gurukesh Moti's bowling today, one for nine with an economy rate of 2.25, mm -hmm. the best Good economy self. rate of the series so far, by far, um, speaks volumes as to how the Ghanaians bowl today because... Um, Alzar will get the plaudits because he took three wickets. Yeah. But in T20 cricket, economy rate is very important. Very. And Moti with one for nine or four overs was tremendous today. And uh, his role in the victory today was just, as far as I'm concerned, as important as anyone else. And I think these victories are so important for the West Indies moving forward. Because, as I say, for quite some time, we've been on the losing end team. And again, we have to remember, this is not the full-strength England team. But it doesn't matter, because we've been... A up against teams that we would expect to do worse than us yeah. and we've lost and we've lost very embarrassingly so for me i think the team is getting more and more confident as well win by win and it's so important as we try to get, go up against bigger teams yeah i don't know how much different personnel wise this england t20 side will get i mean definitely from the standpoint of improving as individual players yeah. that could still happen um, but you have to give a lot of credit to the West Indies. And we also have to give a lot of credit to the captain, Rovman Powell, yeah. and the way he has led this side. Let's not forget now, it's not just this series we're talking about. Um, but remember, under his captaincy, West Indies won in South Africa, that T20 series. And then they won against India in the Caribbean. And here they are now on the cusp of a third T20 series victory mm -hmm. under the captaincy of Rovman Powell. And when you look again at his individual performances, he's averaging 50 with the bat since taking over this side. Um, and you have to give him a lot of credit the way he has led this team, the decisions that he's taken out in the middle. Um, at the end of the first game, um, I think he said, Lance and Mariah, that um, listen, when I'm out there batting, I am not a captain. I, yeah. I try to take that pressure off myself. Um, today, uh, after the victory, he also said that as the captain, there is added pressure that I recognize that yes. in moments I have to step up. And he's been brilliant leading this T20 setup. And I, I just don't think we can have these conversations about this T20 side doing well without injecting how important Rovman Powell has been. Yeah, and to emphasize the point, Ricardo, it comes after his difficulties in the ODIs because he mm. lost the ODI vice captaincy and... Um, and his place in the side. And his place in the team. Yeah, so so um, his career coming into this series uh, had a bit of a stutter because of uh, his ejection 
or his um, omission from the ODI setup. And personally, as a, as a professional sports person, he would have had to deal with that. Yes. And to rebound in this way as captain of the T20 team in the way that he has, I think shows character. Yeah, and we have to also speak about Darren Sami team. Yeah. His captaincy and just... Cool. Uh, sorry, his coaching. <laughs> yeah. His coaching. It's, it's natural to say well, captaincy. It, it, it's, it's his captaincy that propelled him to this position. Yeah, so and we I understand the point you're making. It's yeah. so important because yeah. I just remember when he was you know, put in this position as coach, he spoke about just having patience with him and you know, giving him the opportunity, giving him the time. And time is so important to get through to these players, you know, having these, meet, spoke, speaking about having meetings, you know, getting everything in order. And for me, I think he really deserves also commendation because, you know, we talk about all the players, we talk about all the people that we see, but Darren Sami and his coaching staff as well, they need a lot of recognition because whatever they would have said to this team, whatever plan they have is clearly working and that's so important to recognize. Mm. Yeah, I don't want to be controversial on this matter but for me I actually want to see I, I actually want to give the team more time under Darren Sammy's leadership before I make a determination as to whether as coach he is working um, and somebody will say then how come are you giving um, commendations to Rovman Powell who is the captain well Powell was the T20 captain before um, Darren Sammy took over this team and had success before Darren Sammy came into the setup. Um, mind you, there are a lot of good things that I'm seeing, but I still want to see that, not just in the T20 format, but in the 50-over format where Darren Sammy is the coach as well over a longer period of time yeah. and the plans being put in place and executed consistently before I say, yes, that is definitely the Darren Sammy effect. Yeah, but I, I, while you say that, I understand the point that Mariah is making because... Darren Sammy, as an international cricketer, yes. has always been an underdog. Yes. When he rose to the level of captaincy of the West Indies team, um, I don't think he had the backing of, of, of many Caribbean cricket fans. And he, Less than 10%. Yeah, <laughs> and, and he was able to, to, to ride that, that wave of pressure with success. And uh, conversely his coaching assignment or his coaching appointment was also not embraced by a lot of Caribbean people. And he has been able to make a good start, certainly with the T20s. The ODIs uh, um, had a bit of a rocky start. But I, I think as a person, mm -hmm. Darren Sammy needs to take a lot of credit because he has been a, a, a fighter yes. and someone who has battled against the odds mm -hmm. at every step of his career. And um, if I were in his position, I would feel proud of what I've been able to do. Yes. Well, sure. And he should feel proud, yes. Lance and Murray. He yes. really should feel proud. But I'm just saying a little bit more time to understand if a lot of what we are seeing is really the Darren Sammy effect. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that we okay. can necessarily make that determination. But completely understand the point that yourself and Mariah are making. So much more cricket for us to discuss on the Sportsbank Zone. Not today, though. The second T20 mm -hmm. International will be on Saturday. Ensure you watch it. You can go to the Ross channel on the Sportsbank app. I tell you, there's everything on the Sportsbank app. You just need to go and download it today from the Google Play or the App Store. We'll be back with more on today's Sportsbank Zone.